Today on episode 44 of the Play Guitar Podcast, I introduce slide guitar. I go over what you need to know to add this bluesy technique to your playing, so go ahead and check out part one right now. Welcome, welcome to episode 44 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that will help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. Today I'm bringing you something that I really love to do, and that's play slide guitar. It's really opened up my playing in a lot of ways, and, and being able to play slide has also given me a lot of opportunities that I would never would have had. Um, if you've got any interest in slide guitar, I want you to be able to experience these things as well. So I'm going to introduce slide guitar to you today. Getting started with slides is pretty tough if you don't have the right information. I've, I've known a lot of players who gave up because they just got too frustrated. But today I'm going to give you the basic information of what gear and, and what setups work well with slides. I'm also going to talk about certain techniques that you have to use to, and to get a good sound from your slide. And I'm also going to talk about the patterns to use in a, in a, in a uh, part two and part three to give you an easy way to get started as soon as you pick up a slide. Um, it's something that I didn't pick up right away. I didn't start playing slide guitar uh, when I first started learning. I learned other things, but it's something I liked. It wasn't the main focus of my guitar playing, but when I finally started, I got hooked. It was fun and slide guitar can add so much to so many different musical situations. I know that slide guitar has made a lasting impression on a lot of my students over the years. And whether it's from like Ry Cooter on a soundtrack or like um, Sonny Landreth on like a rocked up song, it leaves an impression. And why is it that? Why is, what is it about slide guitar that has such an effect on people? I think it's because it's so vocal. Uh, the way that the slide moves from one note to another and how it glides in and glides out. It's very similar to how the voice can glide up and slide down seamlessly between notes. It speaks to us. We can hear ourselves in slide. To me, it's similar to the way people react to like a saxophone where it can cry or it can scream or it can even whisper. It's a very versatile way to get your musical points across. Playing slide is something that a lot of players have tried at one time or another. And from the group of students that I've taught, it doesn't always work out the greatest. I've heard a lot of things, things like it's too hard to play or the slide always frets out or it's too uncomfortable or too heavy or it always sounds out of tune. Um, what No one's ever sure what finger to use for the slide and, and it keeps playing notes that you didn't want it to play. Yes, it's different and it does take some getting used to, but just like everything on the guitar we've gone over this year, it's not a hopeless case. You just need to know the tricks. You need to find the narrow path that will give you the most results with the least effort applied. So let's talk about the basics, slide basics. What are we doing when we're playing slide? Basically, slide guitar uses something other than your fingers to play the notes on the guitar. In legends of blues music, I've heard stories about how they would string up broom wire to some nails on the wall, tighten it up, and then use bottles or metal tubes to make music with it. And in its most basic form, that's exactly what slide is. We're using an object across the tuned up string to make some music. For guitar, first and foremost, the thing to know is that you're not playing the frets. You're just touching your slide to the string. If you, you just barely touch it. Um, if you press the slide down too hard and you, you hit the frets, the frets come into contact with the string, you've gone too far. Uh, basically what we're doing is the slide becomes our fret. It's a movable fret. We can take this fret, move it up and down. We can take the slide from the lowest sounding part of the string all the way to the highest part, way past where we normally, normally would play with slides. And we can do that smoothly without hearing each of the notes in steps up the frets. This takes the frets out of the picture, but as I'm going to get to in a few music minutes, the frets do serve a very important function for slide guitar in the long run. So don't go running out getting a fretless guitar just for, for slide anytime soon. We're gonna need the frets. Let's talk about slides. What slide do I play? Play. That's a great question. There are a lot of different slide uh, kinds of slides, sizes of slides. It can be tough to pick the right one for the type of playing that you wanna do. There's brass, ceramic, porcelain, steel, and glass. Those are the most common ones. But there are some more 
some other exotic materials that slides can be made from as well. But brass, steel, and ceramic slides, they seem to be used a lot for acoustic guitar. And the metal ones, the reason the metal slides, are, they're very bright. And a bright slide helps acoustic instruments project more. Brass is a little bit darker than the steel. But then you have players like Kev Mo who favor the porcelain slides for acoustic and for dobro because it's got a little bit warmer sound that he's looking for. For electric guitar, glass is king. Glass slides are really popular for electric guitar players. And it's probably because Dwayne Allman, Ry Cooter, th those are the sounds that we've heard and that we've heard in recordings. And so that's what we've stuck with. But they sound good. And remember, I'm just being general here. You can use any type of slide for any instrument uh, if it works for you. But this is just a good way to get started. Some people prefer real bottleneck glass, the, the, the cut off neck of a bottle, or they prefer old medicine bottles. I've never been lucky enough to have those work for me. Uh, the curve of the glass of, an, of a wine bottle, it's never just quite right for the radius of my strings. I, I never, uh, it never worked for me. I prefer the Dun, Dunlop slides that are perfectly straight, so I know what I'm dealing with there. Also, the medicine bottles that I've used they all seem to have a seam on them that kind of gets in the way of slide too. Let's talk about the size and weight of slides. There's several things to consider when you are purchasing a slide. The inside of the slide is something you have to, to deal with. Where your finger goes in, there's different uh, sizes for that. And they accommodate different players' finger sizes. And there's also different lengths of slides. There's ones that just cover basically to your knuckle or there's ones that actually go out past your finger. Another thing you want to think about is the thickness of the slide. It's, it's something that you can choose as well. Thicker slides can provide more sustain and more tone. And I'll talk about that when we get into setups, uh, about why you would make some of these choices. Uh, but I always suggest a trip to your local guitar store to get a better idea of what feels good to you and what sounds good to you. All right, let, we're going to talk about the which finger to use. Taking a look at some of the players that I was talking about before, that's a good way to figure out which finger you're going to use for slide. The choices seem to be your middle ring and pinky. Uh, up till getting ready for this, I never really thought about it, but I've never seen someone use the first finger for slide. And so I tried it out <laughs> and it, it wasn't great. And one of the reasons is with slide, what we have is um, an area that's being played between the slide and the bridge. But we have all these strings back here that tend to ring out and they don't, it's not really that pleasing sometimes. Sometimes it's out of tune and sour sounding. So what we have, if I've used my third finger, is the two first fingers are behind there and they can damp the strings from ringing back there. When you use your first finger, there's nothing to dampen those strings back there. So also it's kind of uncomfortable too. So I'm going to leave that one out, but let's talk about the others. The pinkies used by a lot of players like Keb Moe and Sonny Landreth to give you three free fingers to play chords as well as slide. You just lift the slide up from your pinky and you're free to use your index, middle and ring finger for anything you want. It's great for playing. If, if you don't have a band, if you're just playing solo, you can go back and forth from chords to slide. Uh, the ring finger, is the one I use and it seems to be the staple for like Southern rock players and classic rock players. To me, it feels the most comfortable. It's, you got the uh, increased strength using this finger and you also have your index and, and middle finger so you can still play parts of chords or single notes without the slide. Uh, the middle finger is not used a whole lot. Uh, the most famous play, uh, slide player that uses the middle is Bonnie Raitt. And I love the way she plays. She uses the slide to really great effect. And sometimes she'll, she'll lift that first finger up and use some of those harmonics from the strings behind the, the slide to get some really cool overtones. Um, so, so that's our intro to slide, quick intro to slide guitar. And I want to thank you for joining me today, but don't forget, well, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also keep a lookout for part two and part three. In part two, we're going to talk about setups and techniques of slide guitar. In part three, I've got an exercise that I like to use with, with three different licks that'll use something that you're very familiar with already to get you playing slide guitar really quickly. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.